Skinny here gave birth on Thursday last week. She started at three and finished up at six. She birthed 11, we have nine left. One of those being the runt, which he's struggling to stand. Um, he can feed, but he is struggling to stand. Currently he's in the house in front of the fire, just keeping him warm. Uh, I feed him every three hours, just a, a formula bottle feed that um, is specific to animals, but it covers a whole range of animals, puppies, piglets, um, calves, all different types of infants this particular formula, formula covers, so that's good. Um, it means that I can have that on hand and if ever I have a runt or any other uh, baby that's not doing so well, I can put it on that formula and try and give it a helping hand. I stayed out with the piglets the night of, all night, and it was easily the worst sleep I've ever had. Not only was she gassy, <laughs> but it was a really small, confined spot where the piglets actually sleep under the heat lamp, so I was pretty well crouched up all night. And the next day my legs killed because I it was either sitting on my legs or I had them crouched up trying to get away from her. Once she'd gone through the initial labour and she started to sort of come to, she became really aggressive and I felt like she was going to bite me <laughs> all night. So that was interesting, but it meant that we didn't lose half as many as last time. They're all going really strong now. Um, last time we lost five piglets. We had 13 and we ended up losing five. This time we've only lost two. One of those wasn't directly from being squashed. So we really only lost one from being squashed, which is a great improvement. It does mean that twice a year, I'm gonna have to sleep in that pig pen <laughs> all night. So I'm going to work on getting that a little bit more comfortable, making, maybe making that section a little bit bigger. I think that first sort of 24 hours is crucial, not only for delivering all the piglets successfully, um, making sure that they're breathing when they come out, making sure she doesn't squash them when they first come out, them just feeding and bringing them back to the heat lamp so that they're not going to her for heat, but they're going to the heat lamp for heat and she then can get up, sit down, whatever she wants to do because the piglets aren't in the way. Don't know if you've noticed my eye, <laughs> but I actually whacked my eyebrow at work with a mop pole. It sort of hit like that, whacked right there, and the whole thing swelled up. And then as it's bruised, it's all gone down into my eye. So that was fun. <laughs> moving and I can push on it and it moves <laughs> oh that was so weird it just keeps moving like a head or maybe a leg or something it'd be pretty I don't think it'd be a leg it'd be something big like a butt or a head I reckon it's pretty cool this setup that I have here I needed to get rid of the weeds from my veggie garden. I can either turn the weeds over 
back into the soil or I can weed it and get rid of them so that there's no more seeds going into the soil and hopefully break that cycle of the weed. Or I can use it as food for my chickens. I know a few people that have small pockets of land but don't own chickens. Owning chickens is really rewarding depending on what type of breed you get and how confident you are you can also butcher them and eat them oh thank you is that for me am i gonna water the garden oh okay. before ray give it to ray okay ray water the garden <laughs> now it doesn't have to be overly complicated that coop i'm moving daily to get rid of the weeds that i would otherwise have to either hand pull out or turn back into the soil, which is a, it's a big job for me. When I don't have a great deal of time, I want something to do the work for me. Not only is it doing the work for me, but the chickens are also getting fed and they're composting the soil that I will eventually grow vegetables back in. I have three chickens in that small coop. They're my Indian game fowl that I'll be using for meat chickens once they're mature enough to breed. The other breed that I'm currently playing around with is the Plymouth Rock. I have barbed, which are the stripy ones, and I also have black Plymouth Rock. They're great because they are dual purpose. You get eggs from them. In the warmer months, I get an egg a day. In the colder months, it halves, I get half as many eggs per day. They're a really easy, docile breed, low maintenance. They are a little bit more price wise than your more common breeds, but like I said, they're dual purpose. So once they're finished laying, once they're getting maybe a little bit older, or if you just want to breed them for meat, you can also eat them. Because they are dual purpose, they take a little bit longer to become the right weight for butchering. But like I said, you're getting the eggs and the meat, so you'd have to weigh that up yourself. If you weren't looking for a dual purpose breeds, a lot of the co-ops or stock feed places sell a egg laying breed, usually a Leghorn, the white one, or an Isa Brown. Um, and that's a really easy way to get started with chickens. But eggs are a really great versatile ingredient in the kitchen. You can do quiche, omelettes, you can put it through stir fry, you can have it in salads, you can do dessert. It is endless the amount of recipes that you can use eggs in. It's a really great food source. Things that you should keep in mind depending on where you live. There's different restrictions on noise and um, how many animals you can have to what space you have. Holy, no, no. He just threw that at me. <laughs> You're cheeky. Don't throw it again. Wally, don't you throw it again. No, you're gonna feed it to Ray. Ray, you want a rock? Here you go. He doesn't eat rocks. Put it in your jumper. Oh no! Now it's in your jumper! Oh no! <laughs> Another thing to keep in mind is if they are free range, they will ruin your gardens, they will ruin your lawn, they will poo everywhere, um, including your furniture, under your house, on your roof. So if you're a little bit sensitive to the way your house looks, I would recommend that small, get out of it. I would recommend that small cage um, and pick a spot maybe in your garden or in your veggie garden if you have one or even on your lawn and you need to be moving them regularly so that they're not destroying the lawn and the garden. Uh, if you don't want to move them all the time, I would recommend you doing the deep bedding um, mulch setup just to cut back on moisture and it will reduce the smell 
Another thing to consider is generally if you have birds and you are leaving food out for them or you're putting food on the ground or even if you just have food in a tub outside, you are going to get mice and rats. We seem to be able to keep on top of it here. We don't get too many, but it can be a real issue if you don't have the right setup. The other thing is we don't have automatic feeders. I feed night and morning. I only give them as much as they need and as much as they will eat. And therefore there's nothing for the rats and the mice to eat. And I think that helps a lot. Shaky sand. Shaky sand. Hello Raymond. Hello. Gentle. You gotta be gentle. Chicka 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 chicka. Good place to start with poultry is chickens. You can get a million different types, fluffy, uh, egg layers, show breeds. It's a really great way to get a little bit of food easily. It's inexpensive, I would say, if you do it the right way. Um, you know, you just need a little bit of bedding and some food and some water and a little bit of time. Oh, you giving Raymond a cuddle? You're funny. Good boy. If you're like us and you like to go away on holidays, we don't have any issues. We're really thankful that we have my parents close by that can take care of the animals for us. Because we have quite a big um, operation here that needs taken care of. But if you just have some chickens, um, a really great way to have someone to look after them is knowing your neighbors and getting your neighbor to just come over and check on them if i was going away and i only had chickens i would probably get an automatic feeder and an automatic waterer which is you can just buy them from the stock feed shop they're not uh, too expensive depending on what type you get and having that there for them and then just getting your neighbor to come over and check um, your chickens to make sure that they're okay make sure the food and water is still topped up and that could be every second day. Um, that's what I would do. They're pretty, um, pretty hardy if they're um, in yeah. a small cage. The other option is with those smaller cages, you can actually pick the cage up and take it to a friend's house. And you can have the small cage with the feed and the water at your friend's house while you go away and come back and pick them up. I think that's it. I think that's what I would do. If you don't have any friends, you could always pay someone. 